Hello folks, good morning again, this is Jake. I'm right in front of uh, the image of Our Lady here uh, at our parish church. We just came from Mass. And again, in today's Mass, another Eucharistic accident happens. If you've been following my posts, you know that since last year, after the Feast of Corpus Christi, almost every day, a Eucharistic accident would take place. And I've talked to our pastor and our priests about this and how they attend to it and how they cared for it. There was very little, if at all, appropriate response to stop these abuses and accidents committed towards our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. Yeah, while uh, there was an attempt to try to revise the rules about cleaning up when an accident happens, that is very little compared to the amount of care and diligence that needs to be put in caring that the accidents don't occur again. So today, another accident happens. And as usual, the priest who presided over that Mass didn't seem to care. Why? Because he let his minions do the clean-up. Again. The sacristans cleaned up, and good they did. But the priest just went about his merry way without even a hint of, I don't know what even to call it, you know? Without a hint of remorse or, uh, or concern or <laughs> even a touch of, you know, I'm at a loss of words, folks. I'm at a loss of words is really the the lack of love that our pastors, priests exhibit towards the Holy Eucharist. You see, if you have a baby and that baby in your hands happens to fall on the floor and gets into an accident, what would a good parent do? Would you allow other people to do the cleanup of your own child? Would you allow your babysitter to take to be the one to console that child who just fell off the floor? Now you priests, you are holding the most holy body, blood, uh, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ entrusted in your hands. The helpless Jesus is in your hands. And when he falls off the floor, when an accident happens, you couldn't care less. You go about your merry way. You let your minions do the work of cleaning up. Well, what kind of a parent will do that? What kind of a minister will do that? There's no sense of repentance for the abuses we commit against the Holy Eucharist. And yet the priests will just go about their merry way, come out here into this very plaza, greet people, and uh, chit-chat with them <laughs> without any indication at all that they are sorry and concerned that Jesus Christ just fell inside there. That an accident just occurred in this very church and it happens almost every day now at least in the masses I attend in the morning now what more on other masses which we don't witness folks the general instruction of the Roman Missal and many other church documents which our own bishops have written have all 
uh, have very many indications of how we should be caring about the Holy Eucharist. Why are we not implementing these things in our own parish? Why are we not putting all the care that we should be putting in the way we minister the Holy Eucharist? Why are our pastors and priests so negligent about these norms? These norms of prudence have been put there as a way of caring for the Holy Eucharist. But you can't even as much as comply with the minimum. You know what I think the problem is really? It's not a question of compliance or the lack of it. It's not anymore a question of the lack of compliance or the willingness to comply with norms and rules stipulated for our own practice. What is really lacking here is love for God. What is really lacking here is sanctity. Sanctity, folks, sanctity. That is what's lacking here. And I'm sorry to say we we have <coughs> there's lack of love there's lack of sanctity and there's lack of faith there's lack of faith these three things and more is what we are exhibiting here when we do not show enough care and love for the Holy Eucharist. We have to put an end to these things, folks. We have to put an end to the abuse that is being committed towards the Holy Eucharist. And I encourage you, all of you, to speak up. I see some of you watching this video. You are in the parish council, particularly of this, of this parish. I see you now. Speak up! And many of you who are also parishioners of this parish and in your own parishes, speak up in defense of the Holy Eucharist. When are we going to speak up in defense of the Holy Eucharist? It pains me to have to talk this way and to have to berate people and particularly our priests whom I love so much out of love for God. But when are we going to put an end to these abuses? Don't we realize, don't we understand, this is Jesus Christ. This is God that we are abusing. No, John, you're asking about preaching. No. What do we hear in their pulpits? What do we hear in the pulpit when these priests speak up there? Yeah, plenty of inanities, John. I'm sorry to say. Plenty of inanities. They don't even speak about the gospel message anymore. They don't even prepare for their homilies. It's, it's sad. We are in a sad and sorry state of affairs, not only in this parish, but in many other places. Let us pray for our priests. Let us pray for our priests. Let us pray for their sanctity. Let us pray for the sanctity of all priests. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. And I don't know what more to say. But this is so sad that it happens very often nowadays. And you hardly see anybody caring about it. On this feast day of St. Elizabeth Seton, let's ask St. Elizabeth to help our priests. Let's ask Our Lady to help our priests care for her baby Jesus, the same baby Jesus whose birthday we just celebrated a few days ago, a few weeks ago. 
let us pray for priests who would really care. Okay, I gotta go. Bye.